not, I do have Esther 4, and actually I think I'm going to be Esther 4, 3, and then 14. And I am reading from NIV. But it's God's word, it'll all be the same. We all know maybe a little bit about Esther, and I'm just going to tap into one thing, because just like my sister said before, reading the word, going back, it's a good story. All right. So, let's begin the reading of God's word. Actually, let me start at 12 because it leads into it. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another will rise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Yes. That's the end of reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. Let's see what God, and he was speaking to me on this. And I was thinking about that, and as I said, Esther, Esther's a good story. There's a lot going on. If you're looking for just ten verses to just see all kinds of things happening in the house of God, it's one of two biblical books named after women. And it's a story about redemption, encouragement, Amen. and it features a displaced orphan Jewish girl. All right? And she's adopted, which I heard before, we talked about adoption, under, um, by her elder relative, Mordecai. She won a beauty contest. King Cersei liked her. She had favor. She became a woman of royalty. Now, the woman of royalty we're talking about, she had an inner and an outer beauty. So now she was crowned and ordained. We talked about a little earlier about the being ordained and the things on the outside. Yes, she was, but we are being ordained, anointed, and appointed in a different kind of kingdom, a spiritual kingdom. Yes, yes. So I'm speaking to you from anointed for an appointment. Wow. We are anointed for an appointment. So what Queen Esther, her story was she became royal in the midst of a pagan environment. She did have a crown, but let me tell you, people there did not like the Jews. And I don't know if any of you are in work or school, in different places, everybody doesn't like you because you're a Christian. Amen. 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 People see the anointing sometimes on you. They're uncomfortable with it. Yes. Yet and still, even as, as Esther was hiding who she was, God was still always present, and he still is. God's anointing cannot be hidden. Now what happened in this text here, there was a problem. Mordecai found out that there was going to be the annihilation of Jews. It was going to be genocide. He got word to Esther, the queen. This is what this verse is talking about. He goes to Esther, he sends word to her, and says, you can't be silent now. Amen. This is not the time to be silent. That's Have you heard that before? Yes. We just finished talking about what the times are. Yes. We are coming to the end times. And we've heard that for a long, but you see what's going around. This is not the time to be silent. Amen. So he put this word in her and said, listen, there's going to be an annihilation. You have to understand what your appointment is. You have been appointed. Yes, you are part of the royal priesthood. But you have had a spiritual appointment in a spiritual kingdom to do work for God. That's why you're here. I'm suggesting to you that you have your own appointment. You're not anointed just so that you can feel good about yourself and enjoy everything and be happy and God help me and prosper me. That's not what the anointing is about. That's not what God said and that's not what he means. So when Mordecai was speaking this to her, what he was also saying is, don't think that because you're there, you will be escaping this. Your royalty, if you're a part of the kingdom and the family, you still have to come and take your appointment and do what you would have to do. Understand? So Mordecai is telling the royals, and he's telling us too in those very words. First of all, no place or privilege exempts you from the responsibility of God's call. Yes. So as you are royal, and you're royal because... It's in your blood. Yes. You know, they talk about the blue blood and the kings of England and how they keep going down in succession and the dynasties. Well, we have the blood of Jesus yes. Christ. Every time you take communion, 
That's it's right. a reminder to you, a symbolic reminder yes. of the blood that's running through you. You are of a royal blood. You are connected to the vine. That's who you are. And if that's the case, as royal daughters of the living God, we're anointed. We have been designed and prepared and called to the work of a most high God. Amen. That's our assignment. Amen. So no position in the church or work, any title that you get, I don't care how much money, what you're driving, nothing that you do or have exempts you from the work that God has. Right. At minimum, as the scripture of the theme says, we need to offer back up our praise. Amen. That's the least we can do. Yes. Another thing that Mordecai is saying when he talks about the anointing. The anointing is the Holy Spirit taking his place in an absolute Lord. Wow. As the absolute Lord. Amen. When you are anointed, there are no other lordships yes. that we are under. We are anointed by God through the Holy Spirit. God is the most high. All other lordships are deposed. They're irrelevant. They're cast out. This also means the other lordships that you have out of your mind the other lordships of your own will, the other lordships of your own desires, and the other lordships of others. It's all about God. You say, you and God. All right? Amen. Another thing that Mordecai is saying, I have two more points, is that although a situation is hopeless, God is never helpless. Amen. Okay. As a believer, Amen. you're anointed this through the blood because we have the King of Kings, El Gabor, he is Jesus, the mighty God, conqueror and war, oh, yeah. who got up with all power yeah, yeah. Yeah. before commanding the Holy Spirit to dwell inside you. There are no weapons formed against That's you right, where right. El Shaddai cannot prevail. Mm -hmm. If you are in a world of pagans, authorities, and other royals, you need to be reminded that we can pull down all the strongholds. Right. Yeah. There's no battle. Yeah. So that when God gives us our anointed for our appointment, we need to understand that we're not going at her on our own and we're not helpless. Thank you. Right. We're not helpless. Finally, God has given us an appointment, and that's a received privilege. When God gives you an appointment, Amen. Amen. you need to receive this as a privilege. That's right. Because yeah. first of all, he's talking to you and calling your name. Amen. He's thought enough about you the way he made you before you were in the womb. Yeah. All right? Before you were in the womb, he's already figured out, and he knows it's God himself who selects women and men into office. He selects them from all the multitudes, sets them aside for his purpose, and that he calls to his assistance not only other humans, but he can call nature and forces of things in the world. That's what God can do. So when he anoints you and he appoints you, you need to go forth with the understanding that it's a privilege, even in the midst of death. Yes. Queen Esther in this story, she might have died. What happened was when she was called by Mordecai to go before the king, yeah. They had rules in the day. You just couldn't step up before the king. That's right. That's right. She had to wait until she was called. Oh, if right. she went, he could have said, mm, your day's done. Mm -hmm. All right? But she decided that she was going to gather the people together. She understood who she was as royalty. She said yes. in 416, go together, gather all the Jews in Susa, and pray and fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, nights, or days. I and my maids will fast and do the same thing. When this is done, I'll go to the king, even if it's against the law. Because she knew King Cerses was not God, her king. So she said, I'm going to do it if it's against the law. Because what, if I perish, I perish. So even if it feels like God is not present with you, he's not going to leave you or forsake you. In our jobs, in our world, in our churches, in our families, even though the devil is roaming the earth, it's God who is Yahweh Shalom who is roaming, yes. giving you the peace yes. to move yes. forth yes. in your appointment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with your anointing. So basically, operating under God's anointing, she accepts her appointment. And let me tell you, through a calculated strategic plan, a royal woman who was spiritually and physically in those worlds of royalty, she is a smart woman too. Yeah. She had a strategic plan and how she went before the king. As a result, the enemy, in the form of a man named Haman, was killed. All the Jews were given permission to defeat their enemies. And even back then, it was Esther, with her uncle Mord with her father, adopted father Mordecai, they rewrote the laws. Yeah. That's why she's the figure she is, because of the royalty she is. So in 2012, 
God's still anointing women of royalty. Yes. I'm looking at you here. And there's men in the room too, and I'm not going to leave you out and let you know it's the same thing. Amen. God declares who's among the world, who he calls among the elect. So if we look and we see, God continues to appoint us for kingdom work. Look at your world. Look at your families. You don't think there's work. You don't see any work. What just came to your mind? You know some work is to be done. So our appointment is not to be grandiose like this. We need to be able to understand that the power that Esther used, that anointing that was on her life, we are also under assignment and under an anointed appointment because deliverance is paramount of the people. Yeah. Christ is coming back soon. Amen. Souls will die. So make no mistake that it's because of the spirit of Jesus Christ and accepting Jesus Christ that you have the power so that the anointing will come in your spirit like he commanded, that you can go forth in the name of Jesus with the power of the Father and the Son working through you so that you can use your anointing for his good yes. because you too, you too have an appointment for a time such as this. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Chapter 1, verse 16. <coughs> Chapter 1, verse 16.